and welcome to my channel. My name is Sandra if you have not been here before and today is going to be a video that I have never done before and I really wanted to talk to you guys about my planning system, all of my notebooks, everything that I use on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis or even a yearly basis to kind of keep my life organized, plan for my family, memory keep and just do all of the things that keep my household and myself organized and complete. So before we get into this huge mess on my desk, I just wanted to talk about um, a few things that I might potentially be changing in my planner lineup. So right now I currently film five videos a week. I film two makeup videos on my Sandra Doll Beauty channel Monday, Thursday, and I post everything at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And on my main channel, Sandra Doll, I do post three times a week, which are Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I have noticed that in my plan with me's, a lot of people aren't really watching those videos. So I've been thinking of ways to change things up and I might actually potentially, I might potentially cancel my plan with me's for a while and I'm going to have these videos instead because I just, I feel like I need to give my videos room to breathe and ideally, if um, we extend our family anymore, which is a potential thing that we're thinking of, I will probably have to cut down to one video a week because I just honestly won't have the time with three children. So in saying that, we're going to get into this video. This is my current kind of, I don't want to call it my planner lineup because that's not what this is. These are all of the notebooks and books and planners and things that I use in my life. This video is going to work in conjunction with my morning routine video, how I use all of my planners together, kind of like Cindy Gunther Baldo's plan as you go, but I'm just going to do one video just to show you how I walk through all of my planners and how I keep up with it. And I'm also going to have a video talking about how Franken planning is going for me, what I would change, what I'm going to be changing for next year. And I just want to discuss a few things with you guys and also a couple of vlog, uh, blogs I'm going to be having up on my website and potential business ideas for the future. So um, number one, my blog is posted every Monday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you guys want to check that out, it is www.sandradoll.ca. I've got a portfolio section, an about section, and a blog section. So if you want to read any of my blogs, go to that section to check it out. And I post again every week. I believe I started in November. Go ahead and check that out. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first thing that kind of starts my entire month, I guess you'd say, is my Cultivate What Matters goal planning system. So this is the second year that I have used this goal planner and I really like it. I've never tried the Moxie Life Planner and I'm not um, against trying that one. I just love the Cultivate What Matters system so much. I, it has worked for me and I'm really pleased with how it's working out. I don't really know about this year so much because the goals have been broken down into mini goals. Um, I'll probably do an update at the very end of this year, just kind of saying what I think and how everything worked out for me. But this is where it all starts. So at the beginning of the year, just before January, I sit down and I do all of the prep work for this planner. And again, I won't be going through any of the planners. I'm just going to talk about each of them just a little bit. And I do the prep work and then I go ahead and set out my first month's goals. If you want to see that video, I will link my January goals for you. If you are interested in seeing the prep work, I actually do have that up on my Patreon account. So if you want to join, I did change my membership levels levels to five, 10 and $20, but they are in Canadian prices now. So they're a little bit more affordable. The $20 membership, I offer quite a few things, including a coloring sheet and bonus items that are specific to a specific month. And I do have my prep work up on that uh, platform if you were interested. As for the first goal planning video for January, I will link that for you right now. And you can take a look and see kind of how, where I'm standing for January and the things I want to work on. So this is where it all starts. And this is kind of one of the things I roll into my morning routine every single day. So the next thing that I jump into is actually my Erin Condren vertical. So 
Now this planner is a little bit special. You will recognize this one if you have been watching any of my Plan With Me's every week. This one is strictly for filming on YouTube and I don't really film my happy planner stuff as much because this one I don't include specific numbers like for bill payments or even paydays stuff like that. It's a little bit more generic and just kind of runs through a list of what I have to do in my home day to day. So for chores, for family needs, for my business, all of that kind of stuff. And this is the one that I'll potentially be taking a break from, if you can call it that, and not filming this planner or my bullet journal every week. So um, let me know what you guys think about that if I do stop filming for a while. It probably won't be permanently, but I'm just kind of thinking about my um, video content and how I can make it better for you guys. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. And I was kind of thinking instead of filming Plan With Me once a week, that I might leave a blank spread and show you how I would sticker a spread for um, different aspects of life. So say for instance, you're a stay-at-home mom, how you would sticker the planner for that. Or if you were a busy person working at a full-time job, how you would use it for that and just kind of go through different scenarios. So that's a potentially an idea that I have in mind. And I'm not going to give this up. This planner is pretty pricey, but you get them personalized and they're just gorgeous. And they have tons of things. If you're a one planner kind of person, this is an excellent planner to have. So the next thing that I usually do is I go through my Frankenplan Happy Planner. So I do have a video on how I Frankenplan this. It has changed a little bit and I also will link my how it's going Frankenplan video because there are potential changes in the near future that I would like to change and how I'm going to change things for next year and things I wish I did differently. So this is the Stargazer cover, which I love. I absolutely love this cover. It is my favorite color. The purple is just so beautiful. And I have tons of different sections in here. So I'll quickly go through with you. I have a catch-all. I have a social where I track my social media numbers. A today section, a notes section, business for all of the things I do on a daily basis, a note section for my business, expenses. So I've got a business expense separate from my home expense. And I do use the organized money um, planner system for expenses. I have a home section, a health section, which includes a physical health as well as mental and emotional. I have a journaling section, which I don't really use much, and a reading section, which keeps track of um, anything that I read at night, um, I usually just write a little blurb about what I read so I can keep it fresh in my memory. And that's what I do in here. So again, take a look at my Franken plan videos. The first one shows how I put it all together. And then the second one will be detailing things that I can change or wish I'd changed or done differently. Then the next thing that I do is I go to my bullet journal. And now this is an Archer and Olive notebook that I purchased probably two or three years ago. And the paper is 160 GSM, which just means it's really thick paper. Um, ideally, people say that you, it can be used with watercolor. It is not watercolor paper and it does not hold up great to watercolor, but it does have like zero bleed through for most markers and pens. The only one I'd say that you would see shadow or bleed through would be Sharpie because Sharpies are just, that's what they do. And currently I have already filmed my April plan with me in here. I actually got four months out of this bullet journal. For those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that I usually use up a bullet journal within three months. I once got a question about it being a costly thing for me to use that many bullet journals. And to be quite honest, like in three months, I don't think $30 is a huge expenditure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, again, it's everybody's opinion, but I have, you, you guys should see my pen collection. <laughs> I'll link that video for you as well. And the amount, the amount of money that I've probably spent in stickers over my 39 years, 
oh my god <laughs> i'll link that video too i'm going to have all these videos linked in this video so you can go and check those out um those are older videos though and i will be filming um an updated sticker collection video soon um also the washi tape oh my god you guys the washi tape don't even get me started so my bullet journal um it's kind of an ongoing changing system and i was talking with my sister and i'm you know what this is crazy to me because i'm talking to you and you're probably watching my video because number one you are subscribed to my channel and you watch my content or number two you are really into planners you're in the planning community and you want to see what other people are doing and notebooks that they're using but I find that a lot of people I talk to, mind you, I am from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I find a lot of people don't know what bullet journaling is. So my sister and I had this quick discussion by text yesterday, and I've decided to do a blog on what bullet journaling is. And I'm so surprised that not many people know about it because I look on Instagram and YouTube and I search bullet journaling and it's huge. Like, that's all I see. But there are some people that don't watch YouTube or don't watch every video out there. So I want to kind of help everybody kind of figure it out for themselves and just to see what it's all about to see whether they like to do it or not. That will be coming probably in sometime in April. So um, check out my blog periodically to look for that. Like I was saying, every month, like I do change my bullet journal up. People generally track, like you can have a monthly calendar, um, a future log so you can have future planning. Um, I include, at one point I included a period tracker, a weight tracker, you can do mood and habit tracking and um, sleep tracking, like anything that you desire, anything that you want, any plans that you have, you can make anything because it is a blank notebook that you can draw anything in. I might have a video about bullet journaling and I'll have a blog just so I can catch more people because I it still can't wrap my head around the fact that a lot of people don't know what bullet journaling is and spreading information is good. So now we're getting down to the nitty gritty stuff. So that is basically my every morning routine in a nutshell. Again, I'm going to have a video getting into the specifics and I'll actually go through a whole day with you. But now we get into all of the other notebooks and planning stuff that I use kind of to help me with all of those things. So generally in the morning after I'm finished my bullet journal, I'll go into my journal. This is one that I just started. And it says, enjoy the journey, embrace the detours. I did get it from Indigo uh, probably two or three years ago now. And if you are curious, I will link both of my journal videos for you. Um, they're journal collection videos. So I, I don't necessarily collect journals. I actually do use them. I just, every time I see a nice journal that kind of catches my eye, there are certain aspects of journals that I'll, you know, I'll look at and I want to pick them up. This one, because of the color and the shape and the size and the paper, it, it's just, I can't really explain what catches my eye in particular journals, but I really like this one and I'm excited to continue using it. So this journal is different than my bullet journal. My bullet journal, I can put things that happen throughout the day, more like events or things that need to get done. This one is more for emotions and feelings. So, you know, I did say that I had a journaling section in my happy planner and I wanted to get that because there was a, an actual journal happy planner that I wanted to pick up. So I wanted to try it, but I haven't really been doing it. And that one was more if I didn't have time and I can just write down a quick note. This one, I can spend hours writing in here, especially if there's something I'm really upset about and journaling. Again, I'm, I'm surprised at how many people don't use a journal because this helps my mind and my emotional state to balance and to focus more. And it kind of declutters my head a little bit to get my thoughts and emotions and feelings out. And sometimes I still put events and stuff that's happened or will happen. It's my future planning, kind of working out ideas, talking to myself, and this helps with kind of... It helps with everything else in my life. Trust me, having a journal, it's not like a diary where, you're, where you say, dear diary, I'm at a boy today, I'm so excited. It's, you know, kind of planning for the future and it's really surprising to read back on your old journals and kind of see where you were in your life. So keeping a journal is a really healthy thing to do and 
I believe I also have a blog on my website that if you were curious about more about journaling, go ahead and check that out. It's kind of like my, the title is why I journal. So go ahead and check that out if you want to. So now I've got more of the things I do not do on a regular basis. Let's start with my password book. So again, this one, I'm not going to open it up and show you because of course I've got passwords in here. But I did get this from Amazon. It is a Peter Popper Press address and email address and password book. And ideally, I don't love to have a physical place where all of my passwords are in case someone were to break into my house and steal it. On the other hand, all the passwords that we have nowadays are so varied. Every single website has to have a different password for security reasons. And if I committed everything to my phone to memorize, because you know how you can automatically keep your phone to update your password or to remember your password. If I get a new phone and I don't transfer my iCloud, all of that is done. I believe it's called like the iCloud keychain and I'm sure Samsung has their own. So I always, always, always write my passwords down. And unlike my mother who writes down passwords in random spots and then never knows where the password is and always forgets it, this is one book I can go to in an easy access place that not many people would find that <laughs> I know the passwords are in here and I update them as soon as I change a password. That is probably one of the more important things is upkeep. So this book is like my life. <laughs> and um, now with everything going online, it is definitely a treasure, let me tell you. Okay, so here's another random kind of tidbit. And this is an idea that I picked up from Claudia Joseph. I'm going to link her channel too if you want to check her um, video out. And I can't remember what vlog she filmed this, but it was probably a year ago now, pl a planning spread for your bullet journal spreads. <laughs> it seems like so much extra work, but I'll show you an example of what I did here. So this, first of all, this is the Shine Bright Journal. I did get this from Amazon. There were three different variations. There was the black and gold, the white and gold, and then I think there was one other one, but I can't remember the color. And basically you go in and you draw out all of the details that you would need for your bullet journal spread. So um, you draw out little doodles and you can color them in. You can do your color swatches in particular, pick out which colors you're going to be using in your bullet journal. You can add fonts and practice which fonts you want and also add quotes that you like. And then sometimes what I'll do is draw out all of the spreads that I'm interested in having and I'll write everything down. And then that way, when I go to actually film my bullet journal video, I have everything written out. I know which colors I'm using, which colors look good together, and and that's it. So I did pencil in a few other spreads, but I never actually fill them in. I did the same thing for setting up a new bullet journal and just penciled everything in. And then this one was for my November one last year. So I did the Eye of Horus and I picked out my color scheme and it just... It's, it's just a really good idea. I don't do this every single time though, because, um, you know, it, it is, it takes up time and you have to decide for yourself what is worth your time, because especially when you have kids, you really don't get a lot of it and you can't work in large amounts of time because I get interrupted so often and this, <laughs> this isn't something that I do all the time. Another thing that I had taken on this year, um, now this is a Happy Planner bag, and um, I have shown this on my Patreon account where I went ahead and did my budgeting because I do have the 8x11 or 8.5 by 11 budget planner from Elena from The Organized Money. I'm going to link her channel too because I will be talking about some of the things that I kind of picked up from one of her a couple of her videos that are really um, good to have around and to use. So um, what I use this one for, and I should note this was an 18 month planner. So it came with like July to December before we started January, but I go into January and 
I basically did not have enough room. I'm going to go to a fresh month just to show you guys what it looks like. This is the monthly layout, which I love. And for me, this is like a perfect um, kind of pre-planning for all of the business stuff that I do. So currently I have a Patreon account. I do not have any patrons as of yet. So if you are interested in becoming a patron, I would love the support. Um, it's definitely one of those platforms that allows artists and um, content creators to create more content and to know specifically what you want and what you like. And it kind of gives you as the audience um, an ability to to do certain things like vote, you get a shout out on YouTube. There's tons of different things. And it's um, one of those things I, I hadn't heard of until recently. Patreon is one of the things and I have tons of content on there. The second thing is my website. So website maintenance is very important. I upload pictures constantly. I'm thinking of changing things around and also thinking of adding an additional um, part of content to my website. Keep tuned. <laughs> I'll talk about that a little bit later here. And then also my blog. So I write a weekly blog and depending on the topic, sometimes the writing is really long. And I also have two YouTube channels. So I have my main channel, which I currently film three videos a week. I've got my Sandra Doll Beauty channel, which I film twice a week. Currently thinking of changing the scheduling, um, the filming schedule for those two channels as discussed previously. And I also continuously upload on Instagram and I'm thinking of potentially starting Instagram stories, which I've never done before. So that is a whole other aspect to the whole business. YouTube, I can say YouTube, but there's a lot that goes into YouTube. And when I talk about, so currently I'm at 701 subscribers as of today and the filming of this video. And when I hit a thousand subscribers, I want to do like, a journey video from zero to a thousand subscribers and just kind of detail all of the work that a person working with YouTube does and how time consuming it is and it is actually pretty grueling and I think it's interesting to note that if it's something that you're passionate about that you want to share with the world it's definitely worth it but I do want to share my journey so that will be one of my goals when I hit a thousand subscribers so please, if you're watching this, please subscribe and help me hit that goal. And I want to tell you how my struggles along the way and things that went well and all of the things. Basically, this planner is my, it's a working planner and I use it to schedule out all of my business stuff um, for all of the things I mentioned. And I'm potentially thinking of opening up not an Etsy shop because I do have my own website, but I want to open up a sticker shop and I will be getting a Cricut machine for my birthday and I'm going to start creating my own stickers. The other time consuming thing, and I guess this is where kind of cutting back the filming aspect on YouTube is because number one, I really want to let my videos breathe. I feel like I film so much that by the time people have watched the first one, they haven't had time to watch the second one and so forth. So. I'm thinking of only doing two videos on my main channel a week, which is more than enough, I think. Um, a lot of people only film once a week. To be honest, drawing out stickers, which I'll sh I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to kind of go through it a little bit. Drawing out anything on an iPad is very time consuming. And especially like if you're drawing on paper, it's different. You have an eraser, you can use a pencil, you can go over and over and over. And you think that it would be easier on an iPad, but learning a certain technicalities of programs like Procreate, for instance, is actually really time consuming. With all of the other things I have going on right now, thinking of potentially opening a sticker shop, I need to have items drawn. I need to learn how to use a Cricut machine and tons of different little intricate things that are very time consuming. So this is my content planner. This is what I'm using it for. So I schedule out all of my things that I want to have scheduled, which is a lot. This is where I put all of my ideas and pictures I want to take. And I do use like little square labels to kind of box off where I want things. Like for instance, I'll show you April. So 
I do color code. This is what I've done here. Some things are for my blog, some things are for my, my two YouTube channels, and some are for my Patreon. And then this is how I kind of block out the areas of this planner. So up here are pictures to take, my blog topics. This is for Patreon, so I've got three tiers. Aurora's is a $5, Comets is 10, and the stars are $20 Canadian. Other video ideas, more blog topics because I do have a lot, and then more blog stuff. So that would just be ideas, notes, that kind of thing. And then you get into kind of the weekly task. So you do one of these little spots is like every single day. So depending on um, whether Chad's home, so I've discussed this before, he works for two weeks straight, and then he's off for one week. So generally, when he's off the one week, I try to film as many videos as I can. And then when he's working for two weeks is when I do all of the background stuff or the admin tasks. So editing, um, blog writing, all of that stuff is when he's working. And I usually work late into the night after my kids have gone to sleep. And I write all of the things down here for like a two week period of everything I need to get done. And this has been so helpful in planning my content. Um, I know a lot of people use particular like actual content planners or planners that are meant for that, but I really like this layout. And the fact that this is a big happy planner has helped a little bit more because you have more room to write. However, um, they finally actually happy planner came out with a classic sized monthly layout, which I have already purchased for next year. So I'm going to keep everything in one book because to take this book, and a classic size happy planner and my bullet journal and my my Erin Contran is just a lot of books so I want to downsize and we'll talk about that again soon. The next thing that I have is another happy planner. This is actually a planner but I got this on sale at Michael's for like five dollars I think and I don't use this planner. Um, I actually just bought it to make like room for my half sheets for all of my paper and the only paper I have for half sheets right now is a happy list but this is sometimes nice to have you can stick this in your classic planner just to have like a grocery list or whatever so I always keep this on hand and then these planner sheets I give to my son as scrap paper or sometimes I write grocery lists on these as well but that's what that is for, just to protect my half sheets, because I couldn't get my hands on a skinny um, notebook. So that's what that one's for. I also have this teeny tiny, well, it's not a, it's not a micro size. It's a mini happy planner as well. So this is one I just picked up for, again, it was only $5 from Michael's. It was like ultra clearance. And I didn't realize that this one was like last year. And it was a 12 month planner, so it only goes to June. But um, what I do is I keep this in my purse if I'm out and I write down things that have to happen. So technically, I would prefer to write things like that in my phone, but I usually never do. So I just always have a pen on me and I write down things like that. Um, originally, what I was thinking of doing was adding this to my wallet. Um, Elena from the Organized Money had a really awesome idea and if you check out her videos it's in her newest wallet organization video and she has this Kate Spade wallet that you can put a happy planner in. She took out the binder rings and she slips this in instead and then she uses it for finance on the go and then she adds her numbers to her finance planner after. I liked that idea, but I didn't want to ruin my wallet by taking out the rings. So I just keep this on my purse as an aside. So I can add um, money spent in here. I can add things that come up, appointments I need to put in here, and it kind of works for now. Okay, guys, we're getting down to the last three things here. So this little book here, um, this is probably one of my favorite things to talk about right now, is a B6 notebook from Simply Gilded. And what I've been using it for, again, I picked this idea up from Elena, is it's called a learning notebook or a commonplace book. 
So what it's for is a little notebook to write down things that you come across throughout your day to day. So say you're reading a book, say you're reading a blog or you're listening to a podcast or even something that comes up on TV that there are steps to take or it's inspiration or quotes or anything like that, even music lyrics you can put in this book. And so, so far, um, I've had a list of books to read. I've had um, How to Change Your Life for the Better. Um, I really like uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. Her name is Catherine Manning. And she has a lot of like self-improvement videos. And I really like watching those. Um, something that also helping with YouTube and understanding the value of your time. Anything to do with self-improvement, personal growth, um, business growth, how to work from home. Any tips like that, I love to put in here, anything that's going to potentially help me. And also, the fun thing about this is that you can read back and you can get more content ideas, especially if you are a YouTube creator yourself or a content creator. Looking back on all of these notes really helps. And the nice thing I like about this particular size of notebook is it's small enough to pop in my purse and I can have it on the go. I also wanted to discuss a different type of notebook I will be using for the same thing. So right now I have probably about five or six of these notebooks from Simply Gilded and I love them so much. But however, they are uh, dotted or there's a couple of them that are plain paper. And I was watching Elena's video and she was using what was called a field notebook. And I ordered these from Amazon and these are strictly lined notebooks. You get them in a pack of five and you can get different sizes. So they have a mini, which is quite small, um, pocket sized. You can get this one, which is similar to, um, it's a little bit taller than a B6, but it's the same width. And then you can get the eight by 10. So I believe these are five by eight. I decided to pick these up because they're still portable and they fit in my classic sized happy ponder is in particular why I got this size but this will be the same purpose as these ones um the simply gilded ones I do have a traveler notebook system that I can put all of these notebooks in so I wanted to use them up first but they don't have a lot of pages so number one that's a good thing and a bad thing <laughs> the bad reason is because you will use it up a lot faster than say a bigger um notebook like a bullet journal but the good thing is they're very portable and you can put them all together in a traveler's notebook. Um, potentially the same thing with these. They are a bit thicker. They have 80 pages and I like that they're lined because I always like a ruled notebook for writing notes in. So that is what those are for. The second last thing is of course my trusty iPad. So I purchased my iPad Pro. This is the 11 inch and I purchased it uh, in 2020, I believe it was August, so going on almost a year. And I love this so much. I originally did get it, um, number one, because my original iPad that I had won from a Sobeys Christmas party one year, my son had cracked it. Um, I'm actually going to link to the unboxing video for this. And um, I just, I am so happy with this purchase. It is probably, other than my Mac, I don't have um, an iMac, it's just a MacBook, and that's my MacBook Pro. I got the 13 inch, and that one, it's actually seven years old, so I'm probably due for an upgrade in the next few years, but um, this is probably one of my smartest purchases, like, ever, you guys. This is an iPad Pro, and I do have the second generation Apple Pencil, and I originally bought it to um, create stickers, so I do have tons of things on this iPad. So um, I'm not going to go through all of the apps on here, but the ones I use the most um, are GoodNotes. I have tons of files in here. So I have notes on all of my business stuff. I have a home folder. Um, I have a packing list. I have ideas for business cards. I have my boss personal planner, which I also have a video on that. I'll link that as well. I have work ideas and notes, and I do prep for my plan with me's every week just to have something written down and to see um, what what's coming up for the next week. And I used to do this on paper, but it makes more sense to do it on an iPad because I can just erase it when I'm done. And I also have video. So 
for my video, I basically write down notes of number one, what sometimes I'll script it, sometimes what I'm going to say, but mostly, um, especially if it's a product video or a makeup video, I write down all the products in the video as I'm going through and editing it. And then I can type it up in the description box later. So those are where I keep all of my notes. And then I also use Procreate. So I have tons of different folders in here and it's a really cool app. This is where I go to make my thumbnails. So <laughs> remember when I was talking about um, pretend, or making a video of my journey from zero to 1000 subscribers, I'm it's in the works because I am at 701 subscribers as of today. And it's going to be a very interesting video because I wanna tell you guys the benefits, the pitfalls, um, things that have happened to me along the way and everything that kind of goes along with being a YouTuber. And one of the things that is also very time consuming is making a really good thumbnail. And I mean, again, a good thumbnail is all in a matter of opinion. There are people who do vlogs, which just have pictures of them crying or looking surprised. And they're kind of like, how do the people say they call it clickbait? So it makes you want to click on it because you want to know why they're crying or why they look so happy or so surprised. And um, ones that look really good, um, especially in the planner community, it's it's very scary actually because a lot of the bullet journal Instagram pictures look very aesthetic. They've got little candles and they've got plants in the pictures. And I truly think that if if a video is really good quality, you don't care what the thumbnail picture is going to look like. In the same sense, in order to grab you, to get you to watch that video, you have to have a good thumbnail. So this is where I go to draw out my thumbnails. I go to do my lettering on the thumbnail itself. And even just to take a good picture of whatever you are filming, it's not easy, you guys. It's very time consuming. And also all of the uploading and the downloading, all takes time. So this is where I go. Um, I also have stuff that I work on for my Patreon. I've got my coloring sheets in here. Um, I do my headers for my YouTube channels. I do my, my stickers. I do artwork in here and I do artwork for other people that have requested it. So this iPad has just come in so handy and I do have regular apps on here as well that I use. So, um, I play games on it. I do all sorts of things. So it was definitely one of the most beneficial purchases I made last year. And the very final thing I want to show you guys, because I know this is already like a hugely long video, so I apologize, but I think this is a really interesting video if you want to know um, what, what are the tools that people use. This is, I'm going to call it my family album. So when I used to take pictures, um, I would basically, you know how like you have an old camera with a film in it and and like that was, I, I had a camera and I love taking tons of pictures and you'd go get your film developed at Walmart or wherever and you'd come home with this big stack of pictures and I had tons of family albums. So I probably have like 12 stacks of albums down in my basement right now and all I would do is I would stick the five by sevens into the album and then have them to look at them whenever I wanted to. So that's great and all. And then I realized that these albums were taking up a huge amount of space. And in the meantime, digital cameras were becoming more of a thing, which is also great because I think the uh, process of like having pictures and music and anything that's digital in a small device that can keep it safe is so amazing. Like that technology is just so wonderful. So then I found flash drives and um, memory space and all of that kind of thing. And I had a digital camera, which actually broke not too long after. And I've never had a camera since. And I've only used my iPhone for pictures ever since I got my first iPhone 4S. So eventually I went from digital and then I started taking pictures on my phone. And of course, when I first got my first iPhone, the memory filled up quite quickly. I only had a 16 gig. So I had to transfer those onto flash drives. So I've got tons of flash drives that have pictures on them. I have a, uh, an external hard drive that technically it's an internal hard drive that I made external by putting it into an external case. I have that full of pictures. And then finally, when technology got even better, I have really tiny portable external hard drives. 
and I'm planning on picking up a couple of more because when you are a video creator, you need tons of hard drives. And if you have a camera, you need tons of SD cards. In saying all of that, I, at one point in time, I started getting into scrapbooking. I've got tons of scrapbooking supplies in my basement. Again, I did not realize how expensive scrapbooking actually is. So um, when I first made a few scrapbooks, I made one for my sister for her birthday and I made a couple for myself and they're beautiful to look at, like they're stunning. But again, you need the space and you need to have the time and the money because stickers from Michaels are not cheap. So then I came across a Polaroid camera and for the most part, using my Polaroid camera and the tiny pictures that it makes was more for bullet journaling than anything. I wanted to add them in there and then I found an HP sprocket which was even better because you could just peel off the back. It was like a picture sticker which was so cool. Um, again, you don't get the best video quality so if you want to take a really great picture it's not the best but it is great for bullet journaling and just kind of keeping memories and pictures on the go because the sprocket is a very tiny machine and Polaroid camera I take it if I go on a trip somewhere if I'm outside you know it's just it's nice to have it's kind of cute it's like a memento thing and so I started trying to figure out where else I could put pictures other than my bullet journal because I go through a bullet journal every three to four months I do have pictures in there and at first I was starting to make these spreads at the beginning of every bullet journal with pictures like one picture every month but because I wasn't using the bullet journal for the entire year it didn't make sense so I stopped that and I ended up getting this huge A4 dingbat journal and I thought I could use it as a bullet journal and didn't realize how big it, A4 actually is. It is bigger than an eight and a half by 11 size of piece of paper. And so I scrapped the idea of using it for a bullet journal and thought it would come in handy to make um, a memento for my daughter when she was born. So then it kind of turned into doing like a scrapbook for my daughter because I was going to scrapbook every time she turned um, another month older. It ended up turning into a family album. So I basically have um, trips that we've taken, um, memories of my family, and then I can also use my calligraphy skills in here. Um, I'll just kind of give you a quick flip through, but it's mostly pictures of my family and pictures of my daughter growing up and my son. And so this is just a really fun way to kind of keep your memories. And again, I don't know if these pictures are eventually going to get old and fall out of here or if they're going to, um, you know, eventually fade. But I think it's just a really nice way to um, write down tidbits of information because in just a plain album there's no way to write anything unless you get one of those special albums and so I like this because I can put pictures anywhere I want to and again I have updated my daughter every single month we went swimming <laughs> our family Christmas and then my son so this was her last um, nine months old but then this is her 10 month so that was that so that is the last of all of my notebooks I hope you guys enjoyed this video just to kind of get um, an inner look at what I do and what I use and how I use it every day so let me know if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you did please subscribe if you're new here I would love to have you and also keep in mind that I will be changing my schedule as a word of caution and also <laughs> hit that bell notification to keep notified every time I upload a video. We'll talk to you guys again in the next one. Bye now. Bye.